Good everyone. Namaste. And the word Namaste is very dear to me because it means the divine in me honors the divine in you. And I think it's the most beautiful way to greet people at any time. So with this new understanding of the word Namaste, Namaste to all in this group, namaste. at the round table, and all our support staff for making this lovely meeting possible. It's been a year since the last meeting and I'm delighted to be here, Mrs. Karve. Thank you for the invitation and thank you for the introduction. UNICEF has its charter and I think we have heard about it. But the two words which I really like in there is every child, everywhere. Yeah, And of course, we've come a long way with nutrition, vaccine coverage, sanitization, sanit uh, uh, water treatment, etc. And I'd just like to say the WHO definition of health. It is not merely the absence of disease, <clears throat> but a complete physical, mental, emotional, social, spiritual, and intellectual, and expanding it, sense of well-being. And like I said, vaccines, uh, undernutrition, all these things are being covered. So I'm just going to touch on two things today, uh, which is mental wellness and nutrition. And not nutrition as in undernutrition, but probably unhealthy food and the food industry behind it. So over the last five years, there has been a digital revolution in every household with online shopping, online payments, the COVID lockdown accelerated everything. People have started living in skyscrapers, there's social isolation, gaming, uh, phone addictions and so on and so forth. But what I have seen with that, that all this has had a great impact on the mental wellness of the child. The way we grew up in a building with 10 flats, we had our own ecosystem, five to six friends who nurtured us throughout. When the social fabric has changed, and there's not much that I can do about it, but in my practice, I'm seeing an overwhelming rise in children with mental issues. Okay, a whole horde of them. Top of the heap is autism spectrum disorder, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, but just disobedience, demanding children, adamant children, uh, temper tantrums, uh, bed wetting, pica, which means eating unusual things, anxiety, gaming addictions, as I said, 8.5% I think is the rate for gaming addiction. So whole host of this and every day in my OPD, I am talking to a couple of parents and telling them, hey look, you know, this is my observation about your child's behavior. Whether you like it or not, I have to tell you. And also discipline, there are instances every other day when the child is just being demanding and I tell them, no, you let the child be. And I prove to them that if they insist on discipline, that will happen. So, jaise rona hai, to rone ka kona ka. Okay? And in Marathi, there is a saying, shis ka baddha mukta jeevan, shis ka hina baddha jeevan. It means discipline is the road to success. So, having said that, are we as a medical fraternity, as a society, ready to deal with this overwhelming issue of mental illness? I would say no. And the reason is that we do not have enough mental health care professionals. The skilling in that area needs a lot of work. We don't have a hub and spoke model for mental wellness or therapy programs, which we should. Also, the parents are in denial about mental illnesses. It takes a lot of convincing for them. They don't want to sometimes spend the money or the time in the rehab programs that we suggest. There is a lot of stigma about it. And worse still, parents do not know or are not aware that if mental issues are picked up on time and addressed, the child is heading for a great education, great career, great future, good behavior and social integration. And I think we need to point this out to the people at large. Uh, I would like to mention here the financials for a specific reason. In healthcare services, you have the neurosurgeons and other specialty surgeons who get paid in lakhs. I'm shivering a bit because of fever, so please excuse me. Uh, and then you have orthopedic surgeons, obstetricians who get paid in lakhs or thousands. And at this end of the spectrum, you have physicians, pediatricians like me, psychiatrists, and the actual caregivers for mental wellness, which are the psychologists and the therapists who are paid a pittance. And I would urge and say that they need skilling and 
this area of work, which is the mental rehab services, should get the prestige and the payment that it really deserves. It will go a long way in helping children with mental illnesses. The second thing that I would talk to you about is nutrition. So like I said, I'm not talking of undernutrition. A lot of uh, organizations are addressing that. But I'm talking here about nutrition, which is a very complex, multifactorial issue, very emotional, uh, very dear to everyone's heart. Nobody likes to be told you should eat that or not eat that. Plus, we are. it depends on the geographic area, our family traditions, cultural traditions, our income, food prices, etc., over which we don't have a lot of control. But three areas I'll mention is the food industry and the millions of dollars worth of food industry, which is today packaging unhealthy food without the proper labels, the media, the social media, the conventional media, which, are, which is catching children really young and making them aware of these products which they are wanting to buy and the parents and society at large, wherein you all would agree with this that when grandparents come visiting or visitors come visiting, they get a chocolate or they'll get a packaged item and then that is looked upon as a treat. So we are actually training children to go along that way. So nutrition is a very, very important issue and I think every school should have nutrition as a subject right from the beginning. Not only that, they should have a school kitchen where even toddlers get involved. I think that will go a long way in making them aware and taking concepts of nutrition home. So all in all, I would like to talk, since we are on the topic of rights, I would talk about parenting, rights to mental wellness and rights to healthy nutrition and what can we do about it. So in terms of parenting, let each child be a planned child and not a sequel to marriage, not a showcasing of reproductive health, but a really planned child. Every person who wants to have a child should undergo a parenting portion. I call it PQ. Are you really ready to have a child? Because when you are ready, you are going to do the necessary study behind it and you are going to be a good parent. In all my years of practice, not a single parent has ever asked me, hey doc, how can I be a good parent? Because all parents believe that they are good and they are good and I mean it. They really love their children. But of course there are a lot of nuances of parenting which people must learn. And along with the rights of health etc. I would say here, each child must have a health insurance. Because in the lower social or economic strata, sometimes if we advise admission or test, they are reluctant to because they don't have the wherewithal to do it. And I think each child should get a health insurance because the child can't go and buy it anymore. And secondly, health insurance should cover OPD services and mental health services. Nobody pays for them, it's an out-of-pocket expense. So, about mental wellness, how can society and how can things change is with um, creating the correct hub and spoke model. That means in the city you have many centers which are well equipped, then you have the semi-rural areas, and the rural areas. So a child in a village near down, and I remember because that was my patient, they must have access to these mental health services and the rehab programs. Skilling of psychologists and therapists, very, very important. Give them the prestige, give them the money that they will truly, truly deserve because they put in a lot of effort behind it. Getting rid of the social stigma behind mental illness. I think any parent should say, okay, my child has behavioral issues and she should not feel bad about it. The next thing about mental wellness, I would say start giving awards in school. Just as you promote your scholastic well, uh, scholastic performances, I think the child, children should be given also the award for the best behaved child, for the most polite child, for the most kind child, and that is going to really make a change in the mental wellness. And one other thought that comes to my mind, is to have a buddy or a mentor program. So wherein you have one senior person who's in charge of five or ten younger children as a support system. Okay? And it's a very prestigious thing to be. And like they say in Hindi, Sangh ka rang lagta hai. Pana cha ekas thin, zami niwar padla ta samto, pana var padla ta samakta, shimplet padla ta moti hoto, farak fakta sahavasa sa. So create this ecosystem for mental wellness. As far as nutrition is concerned, I think the food industry must 
be subject to rules, laws, and they must be given guidelines on what they can write and cannot write, whether they can make false claims, what are they really selling, what is the oil, which is the sugar, obesity ke perils kya hai, diabetes, hypertension, etc. etc. And they should not be allowed to advertise just like that. So that is one thing about nutrition. And I can think of an N number of campaigns for nutrition. Um, what you eat makes you what you are, makes you what you are. Good health is, and this is a fact, is 70% about good nutrition. Eat food as medicine, else medicines will be your food. You all know the five white poisons. Anybody? Yeah, I yes. yes. So the five white poisons must see all this must come out of sessions and talks onto the main platform. And let there be an awareness campaign of the five white poisons. For those who don't know, I think everybody does. Salt, sugar, maida, yeast, and butter. And we can add many more of the raw, many, many more. But at least these five white poisons. Then it should become fashionable to say, I'm ka khana khati ho. It should be fashionable to say, I have deleted my food apps. Okay? It should become fashionable to have competitions in the mohalla, in the communities, about the kitchens. That means the home kitchens not glamorized like Master Chef. But how we make And children should be made proud of that. So, n number of campaigns can go on about nutrition. Having said that, I'm going to end my little few minutes of talk. I'm still shivering. With saying that, Gravitas, you are doing a fantastic job. I think almost from 2017. And it takes, a, it takes true boldness to work in this field. Even though I am a doctor, I would say I may not be able to do what you are doing. Congratulations, ma'am. And congratulations, UNICEF, for the great work that you are doing.